In this video, I will answer a question from a recent webinar called Random Intercept and Random Slope Models. We're answering questions here because we had over 500 people live on the webinar, so we didn't have time to get through all the questions. If you miss the webinar live, this and the other questions in this video series may make more sense if you watch the webinar recording first. It's part of our free webinar series, The Craft of Statistical Analysis, and you can sign up to get the free recording handout and even the data that we ran in the example at this link listed below. Okay, here's a question that was asked by a number of different people, although with slightly different wording. Could you please interpret the coefficients of the fixed effects variables in the random slope model? Sure. Let's go ahead and take a look at that random slope model slide from the webinar. Okay, here are the estimates in this model. Okay, so we've estimated everything and the model's written out right here. I find it a little bit easier to read it off the table, so I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Now, one thing is SPSS will always make whichever value of a dummy coded variable comes last alphabetically the reference group. So these are indeed the rural counties and these are the metropolitan. Okay so it looks backwards because you can see we have the coefficient for rural 0 and not rural 1. Okay rural 1 becomes our reference group so SPSS is doing an internal coding that's opposite the way we've done it. Not every software uses the same default, so you may actually get different estimates that are backwards because it's using the different reference group. So keep that in mind. Uh, know what your reference group is. And one thing I just want to point out here, when you interpret the regression coefficients from a mixed model, you are going to interpret them exactly the same way you do in any regression model. So if you were attempting to learn mixed models, it's really important that you already have this idea of how to interpret your fixed effects, how to interpret a regression already at the tip of your tongue. Like you don't want to be struggling with figuring out the dummy coding or interactions while you're also figuring out random effects. This is why we have workshops like interpreting even tricky regression coefficients. That is the workshop that virtually everyone should take. And if this isn't something you already know, that would be a very, very good one to take. It includes things like interactions, dummy coding, centering, rescaling, transformations, all the tricky stuff that make regression coefficients hard to interpret. There's a whole bunch more, but those are the key things. Okay. That said, let's go through this example. When you have an interaction in the model, these regression coefficients for your quote unquote first order terms are the effect of this first order term only when the other one equals zero. Okay, so this intercept, this thing labeled intercept, is the intercept only for the rural counties. That's this value right here. So 19.2 is the intercept for rural counties. Now again, that, that looks about right. It's a little bit above zero. However, just recall that this graph only includes 10 or 12 of the counties. The estimates include all 67. So they don't quite match up to what we're seeing. Okay, so don't panic if if what you're seeing on the graph does not look exactly like the numbers we have here. The numbers are actually more important. So 19 is the intercept for the rural counties. Negative 5.07 is the difference in the intercepts for the rural and the metropolitan counties. Now, this is what's weird and doesn't match up with the picture it's actually negative. So that's actually indicating when we include all 67 counties, this blue line is actually starting off slightly below the green line. So it must be actually 
looking something more like this, right? And that negative 5 would be the distance between their intercepts. So it's saying it's actually below. So that's what makes it a little confusing here. Time is the slope of the green line, the line, the effect of time for the rural counties. And then 1.99 is the difference in the slopes between this blue line, which I've redrawn as red, and the green line. So if we wanted to know what's the actual slope for the metropolitan counties, we'd have to add these two together. So it would come out to approximately 5.8. That would be the slope of the metropolitan counties. So whereas the rural counties are growing at a rate of 3,800 jobs per decade, the metropolitan counties are increasing about 5,800 jobs per decade over this time frame on average.